Shalom. The Bible absolutely predicts nuclear war in two places. In the book of Revelation 6, it predicts that all mankind, and I'll read, read it in a minute from King James, all mankind will have to go underground. Think about it, people. There is no other reason all mankind would have to go underground, and it says so. I'll read it in a second. Um, un except nuclear winter. And the Bible clearly predicts thermonuclear war in Zechariah, and I'll read that again in a minute, too. But in the meanwhile, understand that Vladimir Putin's um, excuse for this special operation has only been just an excuse because he knows as well as any Russian that NATO, which is the Lord's predestined anointed one, a force of goodness that will that has been prepared for the big bully of the schoolyard, which is uh, Russia. The brute wants to rise. But uh, NATO is only a paper tiger, and they, all Russians know this as well, and absolutely no threat to the Kremlin. Uh, and uh, it has absolutely always only been for in a defensive alliance against bullies like, like him. And so it's time to light the candle of hope. The world has been having a vigil of... Uh, we need to invite hope. And uh, it's been a small world after all. So I joined Mickey and Minnie, and I tell you truly, we need to let our perfect love cast out all fear. And the Lord wants us to be anxious for nothing, knowing that his word says that he has our backs. And if you don't understand his word says that, then you have uh, not been looking in the right places. So, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. Keep your candle lit, and welcome to this uh, program. I expect this is because it is anointed of uh, heaven. It will be a very special video for those wanting to remember World War III and times gone by. But know that the Lord is making a way where it has seemed that there has been no way. And I'm not talking about an, uh, a rapture escape clause, but yet that is exactly what the Lord is doing. And in a day to come, all people in this world will arise knowing that spiritual racism is a dead letter and that there absolutely is no favoritism of love over any of the children of uh, our living Lord of always. And uh, so it's time to realize that um, if NATO is ever provoked, uh, then they would also prove to be the fiercest predator of predators imaginable. And in these days of World War III's World War Z, uh, and, uh, the world is opening now its eyes to the reality and the God's honest truth that the kind of courage that Ukraine is displaying is the fire. They have the fire. And all bullies of, of Putin's most aggressive madness, they are just the desolate smoke. And uh, it's an evil, evil thing that's going on there. I mean, they're um, taking photographs of Russians uh, killing civilians caught on uh, camera. So it's time to have faith from our living faith and let your love cast out all fear uh, so that worry doesn't come near to you due to your passionate belief in he who is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored. For uh, our carpenter of the ages alone is our glorious Lord of love 
whose mercy shall endure forever. And that's why his word says in the latter days, it shall be considered, it says that in the latter days, it shall be considered that he is willing to return his terrifying, fierce anger and stop our fast rising great chaos uh, if we, his children, will simply give him the desire of his heart his heart for us to keep the candle of our heart on and to let it blaze and for that reason maybe what we all got to do is go get a special butterfly of our heart and sit there and guard it and keep it inflamed with passionate because if if our love is not alive and quickened and passionate our love is then dead and it's, it's dying, and we are slowly committing the unforgivable sin of letting our love life go out. About born again, Jesus clearly said that you cannot even tell who's born again. It's as the wind. You don't know where it's blowing. He said, though, but we must be as a child, uh, because when we're a child, our faith is alive. So get out of the land of the walking dead. Uh, where our love becomes just a, a, a noun instead of a verb. Uh, and then we have a form of godliness, but deny the power of love, whom is the Lord Christ. And the Lord says, uh, he says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity, and I will never remember it, Jeremiah 31. And he says, all people who have their love light on as a child are born again of him. And praise God, free at last, free at last, can we be if we will not hide our light of love under the old bushel barrel. And so it's time that we need to enlarge our love within this world as we believe God's word, uh, word of prophecy, because it is only his word of prophecy that is the true compass uh, to his overflowing love for each and every one of us. Um, and he, for that reason, is our good shepherd over all the flocks of man, just as he foretold in John 10 for these last days. So in this hour, you need to ask yourself a question. Is it for certain that there will be a nuclear war? Here's what the Bible says. Uh, Revelation 6.15 says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty man, uh, the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, every slave, they all had to hide themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains and bunkers of the world, all mankind. And the only reason that people would have to uh, hide would be a nuclear winter. Uh, and it is foretold in Zechariah 14, 12, that the days are coming when eyes will consume away in the socket, tongues consume away in the mouth, flesh will consume away before skeletons get a chance to hit the ash-covered ground. Uh, if that is not nuclear thermal uh, war, I don't know what else could be, but um, put your heart at rest. There have been over 2,000 nuclear bombs that have been detonated and tests over the planet Earth since uh, the first ones in uh, Japan, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and 2,000 have gone off. So when Putin does start firing his rocket, uh, the true rocket man of this age, do not worry that we'll have a nuclear uh, winter right away from just a few. It's when there's a multiplicity of many rockets that a nuclear winter would come. I don't know that number, and I'm not too fearful that it will come. Because the truth is, the Lord said that unless these days were cut short by him, by his word in motion, his word in action, then no flesh would have a chance. 
uh, all flesh would perish, the word of God says in Matthew 24, 22. So in this hour, he, by his spirit of prophecy, is cutting time short. I have found four, no less than four, prophecies of the removal of the king of the south in Daniel 11, 19, uh, the king of the north, who attacks the king of the south, rather. And it is written therein in the book of Daniel 11, 19, that he would suddenly be found no more. And this is his assassination. That was foretold by the prophet Kim Clement recently before he went into glory. Uh, by the prophetess uh, Hildegard of Benjamin, and also by Rasputin the prophet, who said that the the cat of abomination, the beast of the Bible, the cat would chase the rats, the rats would then believe uh, and become the mice, and then the mice would eat the cat. Uh, so do not worry, the Lord will have his way in the storm, and the dust are but clouds under his feet. But the Lord is promising us salvation from ourselves if we will stand together for right. And this is the compass that we must follow now. This is the only saving all the world from a nuclear winter and the earth being desolate never to rise again. This is the compass that God has anointed for this hour, the compass that will provide us protection. So apocalypse, uh, it is time. And know that if you understand what apocalypse means, it is the unveiling, the revelation of. And so it's in this time, it's time for the truest Latter-day Apocalypse this world has ever happened. And if you agree by the time this video is done that this perhaps is the greatest apocalyptic video that you have ever heard, bar none, I invite you to share this video with others who need hope. And if you do not share this video, and if this video goes nowhere, that only reinforces what I have believed, that I am preaching to a world that is shallow as a glass of water. People, we must arise and let uh, the great ocean of God's love explode within us, or we're going to doom ourselves by our own uh, desensitized uh, ways. So it's time to be quickened unto the ways of peace, or we can never have any. And if you do not receive hope from this video, I don't know what that's going to say about you, but I know what uh, the Lord says about me. He says it's time for a preacher of good news to come. And I have the best good news that prophecy was never told to tell the future, but to change the future. That is why Jonah 4 straight out says God relented and changed his mind, did not destroy people of Nineveh even after he had told them you will be destroyed and be toast in, in 40 days. He did not because the people's heart changed. And any time there is a little word if in any prophecy, it is clearly a, a conditional prophecy. And Malachi 4, 6 says, if the hearts of the fathers turn to the children and the hearts of the children turn to the fathers, everybody starts loving everybody now, then this world will not be destroyed. But actually what it says is the opposite, that unless this happens, the world would have utter destruction. Uh, Zephaniah 1, 1, birds, fish, no mankind left, all erased by the oblivion that we are carelessly dancing on the edge of the abyss thereof. Apocalypse, an oracle of Fatima's greatest Russian warning, apocalypse of brimstone and fire, and the plague's trial of all flesh, of Revelation 3, Apocalypse, Daniel the prophets, manifested prophecy of Daniel 7, 5, the ferocious Soviet bear, uh, rabid rising out of the sea of a dictator's most passionate greed for absolute power's greatest rush. So receive this revelation in this World War Three days that is scheduled according to Daniel 
uh, 12 to last for a time, times and a half a time. So receive this, this revelation of hope's greatest victory and the greatest might of love's rightest right as our living Lord of always reveals unto all paying attention and to all that are awake that we can all be overcomers as well with the help of our triumphant victor of victors who is Christ the Lord. Uh, and he is Jehovah Nisi, the banner of love over each and every one of us. And he's calling all of our names as if we were the only one. Apocalypse of the grimmest grim reaper of death is in these days. Apocalypse, the satanic war machine of the battlefield of ignorant hearts and minds. For there is no darker darkness and gross darkness darker than the ignorance of love alone. Apocalypse, the doom of ignorance's utter chaos. For it is insane, saying to uh, the rushing uh, uh, waves of a great gush of water coming through a gorge, uh, to say it's crazy, to say to such a torrent, to stop in the middle of the gorge, it will not obey you. It will up, 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 pull up all the leaves within the, the, the valley, and it will not hear your words at all. For only God knows where such water of a, a out of control flood and torrent would go. But the word of God declares that World War III is not going to be good and that God wants to enlist your help. He needs a few good people, a good man, a good woman, a good child. Are you people of love? Can you lift up Mickey and Minnie with a smile on your face still? Then you're a person of love. So come with me. Leave the safety of the shores. Come out into the deep. For our treasure of excellence is our priceless pearl of great reward. And he is the excellence of treasure. For he gives love unto our keeping. Uh, and this will prepare us and keep us. These are the days of the apocalypse. Apocalypse of the holy being destroyed by their lack of knowledge. Apocalypse, the whore of Babylon. Apocalypse, the demonic holocaust of the genocide of all Russian executioners of a real crazy World War Z gone totally insane. Apocalypse, the shattered European dream. Apocalypse, a fellowship of love's death swiftly for all those embracing World War III's newest Hitler on nuclear steroids. Apocalypse, the number of the beast. Apocalypse, the devouring locust. Apocalypse, a holy revelation. Apocalypse, the seventh seal of God and the seducer of earth revealed. So let all those wanting to shine like our glorious son of love understand well that hate story ends uh, and uh, when love takes over and only when love takes over. And for that reason, condemn not Putin for he is far more to be pitied than to be censored, but pity him a lot. Pity him a lot because our Lord God is standing tall against him like a mountain that is getting ready to cast down uh, a little itty bitty valley in, in, in front of him. And uh, the dust are uh, of his insanity is but as uh, dust under his feet. And by the Lion of Zion's living word, if that onion head, and I call Putin an onion head for sure because there is no better onion head that's ever been around. And if he does not uh, come, come forth and stop his cruelest war is bad breath. If that doesn't turn around, he'll just end up being like a, a rotting and a cursed turnip that's just pushing up daisies from six feet under because of the prophecies connected with his terror. And Putin's assassination was clearly foretold. Uh, and uh, in this hour, uh, if I could go back and uh, undo Hitler, I guess I would. And so too 
what many do for uh, that great Soviet Kodiak who is rising out of the sea. For Daniel 7, 5 says that that great Soviet bear would hear the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like as it's chewing on three ribs stuck between its fangs. And those three ribs are Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk. And uh, so he is coming forth now as a pissed off grizzly. And uh, in this day, these are the days of that bear hearing that it can have its way. And there's no doubt that those three ribs are Ukraine as Daniel 11 and 12 foretells. The king of the north would invade the king of the south. That is that fully manifesting in this hour. And so, praise God, unity under the flag of NATO has finally come unto many sensible souls of Europe as most loving people of the globe stand together under the fast expanding NATO compass. And it will not surprise me if the first nuclear uh, exchanges happens right after Finland and Sweden join because uh, we're, this guy Putin is damned if he does and he's damned if he don't. If he doesn't belch out some really sick ass stuff then he's going to know that all the world is going to think him to be a coward and that all the world is going to think him full of just hot air, just rhetoric, that he's a do-nothing, that all his words and threats of nuclear exchange have all been meaningless. No, 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 no. His legacy is to be the destroyer of Europe if we allow that. So he will push those buttons. And just as the Bible says, uh, Armageddon, the battle of slaughter, is ahead if something does not happen. Uh, but praise God, because the Lord has let us know the future ahead of time, we as one people with one hope for one glorious future of a kingdom age ahead, uh, a world of peace and hope and love, it is on its way. That cannot come unless the nuclear realities are all put down. And beating our sword into the sickle is to put away all nuclear uh, weapons upon this earth. And so know that for the advancement of humanity, NATO alone has been the chosen life force of love's righteousness. And all people of love shall let their hearts be united so that our Prince of Peace might give us his and the truth is, Christ said that in the latter days, people will not be able to, to grow together any longer. There would be a division, the wheat and the tares. The wheat are with NATO and they will come with us. The tares are all the hateful people of the world that, that only want to live for the warmongering ways of a dictator gone absolutely la-la and back. Uh, and at the same time, the world's warmongers are clearly revealing themselves to be nothing more than rebellious murderers of our worn, tor torn world. And such insane and heartless people as Putin turns to, as he turns to salute chaos. Um, it is clear that such is his embraced abomination. And all those of love will see that uh, he has a false Jesus whom he thinks can forgive him. But I tell you truly, he cannot. And so praise God that it will not come to pass uh, anything except him being tossed out into the outer darkness for he cannot be forgiven. Uh, it is the unforgivable sin uh, of the Bible uh, to let your light of love go out. And uh, so it is time to realize that uh, the false Jesus in his mind approves of his war. And so therefore, uh, there is no God that approves of a cruel war like this. Uh, the Lord wants us to stop the ways of war and learn the ways of war no more.
And since biblical prophecy has never been told to tell the future but to change it, uh, it is clear in this hour that our future oblivion of Zephaniah 1.1, 1, 1, all the birds uh, destroyed the fish, all the fish on earth, and that did not happen in the first oblivion. Uh, that future is not yet written, people, since God himself is firmly standing against uh, Moscow and against that Antichrist wannabe himself who sees himself as Russia's very last czar. So behold the dreadful wailing of the Ruskies from, from hell, wallowing like pigs and in innocent blood spewing forth uh, from a multitude of, uh, from the Lord God Almighty's iron-handed judgment that is now coming forth. Watch therefore the economic guts of Putin's awfully inflated ruble being spun upon the great loom of self-inflicted suicide. Accursed are, plan are those planning uh, death at Helsinki uh, and Warsaw. And most accursed is that plotting disgraced king of the north that Daniel 11 foretold, invading the Ukrainian king of the south in Daniel 11. Behold the awful nuclear threat issuing forth from the putrid bladder of Putin's very worst lovelessness as our most high tailor of the ages spins a fabric of the darkest chain to fall upon all hateful Russians like pus dripping into the mouths of those loving uh, warmongering, loving the warmongering chaos of pointless, obsolete war. Behold the world's newest Vlad the Impaler, who has cut the world a big new one, making Russia into the smelliest sphincter thereof, so that it would be Earth's biggest asshole. And for this reason that Soviet dictator of dictators shall find his splattered brains uh, looking like a spider web that's covered with bloody snot when the judgment of his lovelessness covers his evil loyalists in crimson hues of his blood being spilled out upon the ground by Russians. Accursed uh, shall Vladimir be when he awakes, and accursed shall he be when his nightmares finally cause his craziest insanity when he uh, first attacks NATO, and it is just around the corner if he is not overthrown by a desperately needed coup uh, be before millions of people have a chance to die. And by the spirit of prophecy in these days of our Lord, cutting these days short as Matthew 24, 22 promises us. So it's time to celebrate. And in these days know that all people will not perish. Uh, that KGB pariah of pariahs shall soon become like some real stinky shit on Satan's shoe stuck there as Satan will allow the hounds of hell to greedily lick, lick it right off and lick that guy right in his face because that guy, that guy, that guy is gone. I wouldn't want to be that guy. That guy is toast. And as his followers walk the terrifying road of perdition while letting their very own love lights to go out, all such loveless and hateful supporters of that World War Z president of hatred and emotion shall spiritually become like some uh, rotting gristle festering away in slimy pools of demom de demonic vomit, uh, and he would be quite, quite comfortable, Putin would be, in uh, the midst of such putridness. Nor is there any doubt that putrid Putin would become like a cancerous boil and like the genital warts on Satan's arts of Hades. And as Daniel 11:19 says, he will then suddenly be found not, just as it is written. And in these latter days of Daniel, the dragon and the beast shall be cast into hell, so death needs not come unto the battle of slaughter in Armageddon's the valley of Jehoshaphat. Behold the reddest blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and by his living word of hope that roaring lion of Zion is roaring louder than ever before as he allows Russia and the whole world to shake at the end of these days. So let all wise people shining by love's kingdom-made star of stars 
cast away their very worst festering fears and tears as they beat all of their swords into sickles for love's very best harvest so mankind won't have to flee into those holes into the caves as it is predicted in Revelation. So let the wise people of Russia stop in embracing Vladimir Putin as he hails the swarm of demonic demons that he's been sending all over Ukraine like flies from the bottomless pit. So hark the horns of Armageddon, for they shall herald the messianic oracle of slaughter and wrath, uh, that they do not have that those things do not have to come if the last Russian revolution of love would instead arise. Raise the flags, blow the trumpet, sound the alarms, ready the bunkers, uh, and stock up on food. Uh, it's time for the watchmen to be on the walls, and those of NATO's defense curse Putin uh, in this hour. Uh, an oracle of darkness is coming from his very own apocalypse's war. Uh, now comes his, Russia's br brimstone and fire. So blessed are all those keeping their face to the sunshine so that they cannot see any shadows. Our sun of righteousness is arising, Isaiah 60, a sun of love, so that all the gross darkness of hatefulness can be thrown to the wind. And woe unto all those not heeding this divine message of hope's abundant hope. Uh, they must hold on to uh, the hope that he brings, if there is to be any. For if it's not for the hope that Christ brings, the world would have none at all. Apocalypse, it is time, the horror of Babylon and a reversal thereof. Apocalypse, the demonic holocaust. Apocalypse, the shattered universe. Apocalypse, the fellowship of death. Uh, apocalypse, the number of the beast. Apocalypse, the devouring locust. So let all those waiting to see that future aborted uh, arise and shine with loving hope from our majesty of majesty's glory, since his mercy uh, over us shall endure evermore. Woe to the faithless of fear, uh, because fear begets fear uh, as uh, death begets death. Uh, accursed are the paranoid of backwards and loving religion like Russia's has, uh, so that uh, um, his not-so-shiny leader therein, uh, he will have absolutely no choice but to embrace a personal dark apocalypse uh, of their own undoing, which Russia has been bringing forth. So it is time for apocalypse, a holy revelation, and then shall many chase after the apocalypse of the seventh seal of God as they prepare for it to be cast into the gross darkness of our blackest and darkest great beyond, where people like Putin shall evermore be weeping and gnashing his teeth. Vanity of vanities, death comes this way. So it's time to prepare Russian roulette. Uh, it's time for hate instead of love. Uh, love instead of hate. That is what we need. Apocalypse, a pale horse of death. Apocalypse, the satanic war machine. A, uh, the dragon of chaos. And it's time the dead can be reborn. Come alive, people.